Hey, good morning. It is Thursday, October 31st, and that means things are getting scary. Things are getting scary because in just a few days, America, the majority of Americans are going to go to the poll to vote for those political officials that they feel are their candidates. That's going to, going to do what they feel is going to be important for this nation. And while I'm, I'm not all here to talk to you about that. It is scary because I've never seen anything like it. I don't, you got, you got these two sides that are totally opposite of one another. And both of those sides are jacked up somewhere. Amen, somebody. And you might not agree, but, but I'm telling you, uh, we've got some praying to do America and we've got some meditation to do before we do all that Americans. We probably need to repent. <laughs> I said that. Yes, I did. Um, I want to take you really quickly to this word uh, right before I get ready to get out of here for work today. Um, I titled today's uh, manna as scary stuff. I, I really did. I just I just put it right out there. It is just some scary stuff. And I want to take us to Luke chapter six verses 43 through 49. And, I, and I'm specifically, purposefully reading from the King James version, version of the scriptures. And so here's what it says. And I want to leave you with some thoughts and then I'm going to wish you well. And then I got to get out of here. So uh, Luke chapter 6, 43 through 49, it reads as follows. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. Think about that. Neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his fruit or her fruit. For of thorns, men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. Think about that. Oh man, I want to stay right there, but I can't. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man or woman out of the evil treasure of his or her heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, for out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. And why call you me Lord? What the, God, Jesus is asking, why do you call me Lord? Why do you say Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Come on, somebody. Come on, saints. Come on, church. We're calling, we're calling Jesus Lord, Lord. We're saying Lord, Lord, but we don't do a thing that Jesus says. And I'm talking about either side, either side. Here we go. Um, verse 47, whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Here it is. Jesus is saying in verse 47, if you come to me, you hear what I'm saying. You've heard my word. You've heard what I've spoken about. You've heard what I preached and I taught and you do them, this is an example of who you are. Here it is, verse 48. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Oh, my Lord. But there's a flip side. And that's where verse 49 closes this thing out in Luke chapter six. He says, but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation, with, with no basis, no spiritual depth, male or female, no spiritual depth, church, male or female, Republican or Democrat, no spiritual depth. He says he built a foundation he built this house upon the earth and when the streams did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. You see, we're, we're coming through this, this political uh, climate that we're in and, and, he, and, and Jesus gives this illustration of these two builders, one that was built, that built his home on a solid foundation, and then another that built his foundation on something that wasn't even solid. He, he built it on sand. He, he, he or she built it on nothing. They, they built it on um, prowess. They built it on status. They built it on stature. They didn't build it, build it on spirituality, right? And, and, and the conclusion of this 
this illustration that Jesus gives is, is how solid or not the foundation was. But watch this. I believe, as, as, I, as we spoke about it last night in, in Bible study, I believe that that foundation that Jesus was telling us to build on was himself because it was a rock, the capital O-R-C-K, the rock, Christ the rock. But watch this. I believe that as we grow into our, our into age, into you know our, our decisiveness when it comes to parties that we're affiliated with or civic organization or even, even churches that we're connected to, I believe, this is me personally, I believe that our foundations shift because we say that we're on the solid rock. But watch this. Sometimes if we're not careful, our foundations are built on political lines. Our foundations are built on politics. Our foundations seem to have been built on culture. Our foundation can be built on laws. What's going what's gonna to pass for me that's good for me? What's going to what's going to what's going to benefit me? Our foundation can even be built upon people. And then we wind up not trusting the God that we say we have trust in. So watch this. This is a subtle trick and tactic of no one else but Satan. So I ask you today in this in this manner that really is talking about some scary stuff. Have you really thought of the foundation that you're standing upon? Have you really thought about the foundation that you're standing upon? Is it Christ or is it something else? Just some food for thought today as we get ready to, to go through one of the most pivotal times in our country. And we really need to think about it. We really really need to think about it because whom do you profess to be may just be connected to the foundation that you're on and don't get bamboozled because the devil is pretty smart and that's not giving him any credit it's just saying how subtle he is to keep us divided and to keep us further away from the christ the foundation that we really say that we're connected to. Food for thought, scary stuff. God bless you, manna.